Lake Annie, Florida, February 2008. A team of ecologists and technologists, faculty and students, deploy an environmental monitoring buoy over the deepest part of this pristine 90-acre lake. Powered by solar panels, the buoy is equipped with a wireless transmitter, sending data every 15 minutes from half a dozen different sensors to the Archbold Biological Field Station two and a half kilometers away. We were able to know that it was actually transmitting because we called from the lake to the station to find that data was already streaming in, so that was miraculous. Water quality surveys have been done every month since 1983 on Lake Annie. It's like we lived our life and we only had our eyes open for one day every month of the year. And you can imagine how much you would miss of a year if you only had your eyes open for one day of every month of the year. That was the amount of data we were collecting. If we have these sensors deployed, we are going to have our scientific eyes open here 24-7, 365. Deployment of the buoy on Lake Annie coincided with a twice yearly meeting of the Global Lake Ecological Observatory Network, GLEON for short a grassroots group funded primarily by the National Science Foundation, building a scalable, persistent network of lake ecology observatories. Approximately 70 experts converged on the Florida field station. They came from Asia, Latin America, Europe, and elsewhere. Most were lake researchers and ecologists, others engineers or information technology experts, all looking for new ways to get and share data and collaborate. The main thing that, that we try to do is share our experiences, our expertise, and our data. Cyber infrastructure is important for the GLEON network and the other uh, environmental observing system initiatives because it is the medium by which you collect data, share data, and, and collaborate. The time when you could uh, conduct your field research with a pen and pencil is, is long past. There is so much good science that's going on outside the borders of our country. We, just because of our own resource limitation, have to be able to tap into that. They have expertise that we don't have. We have expertise that they don't have. It's hard, act, believe it or not, to find good um, replicates of lakes because you're stuck with whatever you have in your lo location that you're at. And Wisconsin has a lot of beautiful lakes, but sometimes we need a lake that's um, different enough in some kind of way that we can't find in Wisconsin or maybe we prefer that it be at a different latitude or a different elevation. Paul Hansen spearheaded a research coordination network grant from the NSF to support GLEON activities specifically to build the community of researchers. It's especially potent to take people who have an engineering and an information technology background and combine it with those of us who have more of an ecology background to try to advance the agenda. In addition to its NSF funding, Gleon shared in a private $2 million award in December 2007 from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation to help Gleon put in place the physical network. Non-U.S. members of Gleon get funding from their respective governments to participate or deploy sensors. David Hamilton holds an academic chair funded by a regional environmental organization to pursue research on water resources in New Zealand's Rotorua Lakes region. If you uh, didn't go out for two or three days and you missed an event of very, very low oxygen concentrations that essentially killed all of the aerobic organisms within the lake, then you might actually miss the whole change in the ecology of the system. The international participation between all the different countries is the way of science goes. Science has to be, you know, you, we, we, we have to share our different experience, our different knowledge. If we have to learn because we don't know, well, we learn. This is science. I mean, we're working together. Working together is how Gleon got started. Taiwan's National Center for High Performance Computing set up EcoGrid in 2002 through an NSF-funded program called PRAGMA, the Pacific Rim Applications and Grid Middleware Assembly. A Taiwanese cyber infrastructure expert invited University of Wisconsin Lake researcher Tim Kratz to collaborate on deploying an instrumented buoy on Yuanyang Lake and to share data with a Wisconsin lake. So we thought, gee, we were able to do this for two lakes. What's to stop us from doing this globally? Right now, um, it's possible to go to a, a single website and access data from, uh, from I think, nine different lakes in four different, uh, in four different places around the world, and we're adding to that almost monthly. Now they can do a, a, a different kind of research, um, more uh, analysis, more on the science. So that's uh, what we help them. 
By making most of their data available to the public, Gleon members hope to engage more community organizations and citizen scientists in environmental research and lake management. A New Hampshire Lake Association was among the first to discover cyanobacterial algae blooms in Clearwater Lake Sunapee. Researcher Kathy Weather suggested that an automated buoy might allow the community to monitor the invasive blooms better. I brought the idea back to them and they, they were immediately intrigued. Even people who have no interest in science were immediately intrigued. Can we, can we see the temperature in the lake by logging on to, our, to, the, to the web? And so they became intrigued. They actually financed the buoy. They gathered together volunteer engineers to create a design. Graduate students were out in force at the Gleon meeting in Florida. For the first time we have a substantial number of IT graduate students and aquatic ecology graduate students which regularly don't normally interface in their home universities but by coming together we're trying to develop a vocabulary by which we can interact. Having students be able to understand and see data from these types of lakes I think will be very transformational. They will become part of the longer term process of maintaining the environment, if not only maintaining it, improving the environment. As more buoys are deployed on more lakes worldwide and more data is shared over the Gleon network, cyber infrastructure will give researchers the chance to collaborate in new ways. But eventually, the value of these high tech tools depends on the answer to one simple question Are we going to be able to do new science? And ultimately, that's the bottom line. Cyber infrastructure is really about community building and new science.